Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today I want to take a look at this module. This is a HW039, and basically what it is, is it's a fairly inexpensive high current motor driver. So this thing, uh, you can drive motors from 6 to about 27 volts, and at a max, well they say it's a max of 43 amps of peak current comes with a fairly beefy heatsink, a lot better than those uh, 2, 2988 or whatever they were, 298 uh, motor drivers. Um, and you'll see on top there's uh, two main chips and this little side one here. The two main chips, uh, they are a BTS 7960B. And what these are, these are half bridge drivers. So you need two of them. So basically each of them has one P channel and one N channel MOSFET and you put two together and you get a full H bridge driver. Meaning with just this module, you can drive a DC motor uh, forward and backwards simply by sending logic level signals. Those logic level signals, um, they're handled by this 74HC244, which is a buffer chip and I believe that all the only thing that this thing is here for is to condition the input the, the input signals and to allow the input signals to be completely shut off. And I'll show you why uh, shortly. But I will leave a uh, link to the data sheet of this module, these two chips, and this chip down in the description. And in fact, the the PDF for this module itself has some Arduino code that you can run on your own. So one thing I find interesting is the BTS 7960B on top here, these two chips, they're listed on the, I think it's Infineon had a data sheet, uh, they're listed as being automotive applications, like to run sunroofs, power uh, door locks, uh, power windows, um, transfer case, you know, four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive. So if they are certified for automotive use, that must mean they're fairly robust. What I also found interesting is that each of these can handle uh, 33 amps of peak current, but both of them together that create the uh, full bridge, they're stating a maximum of 43 amps. Now, when you're using a full bridge, uh, and you should probably check out my video I did for PCBWay in the description, about this for more detail. But basically, you're running one P channel and one N channel to run in one direction, and then uh, one N channel, one P channel to run the other direction. So you're actually using both chips in both directions, basically. And then you can break by turning them both on or both off. Um, and with both off, you can coast. As for the logic side here, you do need to supply this with its own logic. Um, they say 3.3 to 5 volts, but uh, I would recommend just going 5 volts, very standard. And then uh, there are sort of uh, eight positions here. So you got, you know, four by two on the pin header. On this side here, you got VCC and ground. Next, you've got um, current alarms. I'm not quite sure what they do. It's not on the documentation for this uh, module. Um, it's probably on the data sheet for this thing, but I don't think I'm going to worry about it because I don't have any way to test it because I can't push that much current through at this point, or I can't pull that much current from power supply at this point. I was trying to buy a really big um, DC motor, but it went, it like almost tripled in price. So that'll have to wait for another day. Then you have um, the enable signals. So they say left and right. They, they go like uh, R enable on top and L enable on the bottom. I think it's just, you know, one, one chip or the other. But you'll see that one of them is forward, the other one is reverse. And if you don't like the assignment for that, just swap your, your motor wires over. And then over here, you've got the PWM. So all you have to do on this is you, you PWM them, the, the signals here, either by an Arduino or by whatever else you're using, and that'll vary the speed of the motor. So speed, 
on these two, and then the forward or reverse on these two. So it's actually very simple. You can hook this up with uh, four wires to your micro. And in, in fact, you, if you don't need speed control, you can actually tie these high or low or whatever. And then over here, very simply, you have a battery negative, battery plus, and that is completely separate to the control logic. This is just for the motor driving side. And then your two motor leads. And again, it doesn't matter which one you put in where, just need to swap the polarity in order to uh, swap the, the direction that each command brings you. So I'm not going to hook this up to an Arduino because it's a little bit hard to see what the Arduino is doing, but I will hook it up to my input box and I'll bring you back. All right, I got this all set up. Um, just letting you know that all of my four channels here that I'll be using have the pull down resistors and I'm also using the 470 ohm uh, current limiting resistors. Um, that's just, I mean, standard when you're just doing signal stuff. Um, the way it's set up, it is right enable, left enable, um, right PWM, left PWM. And right now, uh, these two are floating, so I guess they're really uh, pulled low. These are active high signals, so if you want to send a signal, you have to send a high, so everything is low at the moment. Also, I've got my separate little 5 volts here, but since we don't need a lot of current on the 5 volt rail, all I have is this little breadboard power supply powering this, powering my board, and I've linked the ground uh, coming into the board here, which is uh, 24 volts. Uh, I've linked the ground to my board by this cable here, it goes back to the power supply. You have to make sure your logic ground and your, um, you know, this board's ground are together. Um, and then I just have this little um, uh, motor here. So right now with everything off, basically we're not telling the, um, the the motor that we want it to go, and we've disabled the inputs anyways. So right now everything's disabled, so this just turns freely. So now we could try to send a high to this motor, but it doesn't do anything. Maybe I should turn on the power supply. It doesn't do anything because we, don't forget, we have those enables uh, pulled low. So it will not let me turn this at all. Now, if we enable both those inputs, now the motor turns a little bit more difficult because uh, right now it's shorted together. The two windings are shorted together, so you have a hard time turning this now. Uh, and then if we want to command it to go, all we have to do is bring the enable up. There we go, spinning. And if I try to slow it down, we're gonna see a little bit of current rise. So this thing can handle it no problem. Turn that off. And then if we wanted to go the other way, there we go. That delay is just because my switch is a little messed up here. So that's this is the switch messing up. But I can actually pulse the switch because it's a messed up switch, you know, to sort of simulate a super slow PWM. And then you could put both together and that shorts the windings together again so you get faster braking and both off, um, or these off, will let you coast, and now you can spin this freely. So basically, you could even you know enable one and not the other, and still nothing happens. You have to enable both in order for it to go. My switch is a little messed up. Sorry about that, but yeah. So so that's it. Uh, one direction, one switch, the other direction, the other switch. And also what you can do is you can, um, you know, say you only wanted one direction, which would be like this. You can just enable, disable the enable pins. But, you know, normally what you would do is you'd PWM um, these pins and then have this as like, you know, a safety break or something. Yeah, they, they both need to be enabled for it to work. So that's that simple. So you just send, you know, you enable both and then you send PWM on one for forward, the other one for reverse, and that's it. 
there's really nothing more to it. And so let me know in the comments if you guys want me to go through the Arduino software you would need to control a motor like this with PWM. I don't think it's necessary, but if there's enough demand in the comments, then I'll do it. Hopefully you guys will be able to use this in your own projects. I do recommend it. I wish I could stress test it, but I really need a bigger motor to do that. Thanks for watching.